Martin Short. Yes, sir. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Thank you, R.H. Thompson. <laughs> Thank you. We've introduced each other. Yes, taking care. I'm okay, Martin Short. I'm in particularly in love with you. R really? Yes, because your physical comedy. I, you've kind of, you were like a life boy for my comedic instincts from the very beginning because they would be short doing these outrageously physical things. So why, phys why so much physical? Why do you love the physical of it so much? Um, I, you know, even as a kid, when people would talk about the Marx Brothers, and a lot of people, especially writers, would talk about Groucho Marx. To me, it was Harpo Marx. Because, or as a kid, it was Jerry Lewis. Or, or Lucy. And it was the absurdity of their comedic choices. And a lot of that absurdity was the sudden physicality where Harpo would suddenly just jump on a desk and grab the pen holders and pretend he was flying a plane as someone's holding his feet. That riveted me from a little boy on. Why? I don't know. Why are you attracted to absurdity? I mean, you're a fellow traveler because that's, that's what keeps me going. Yeah. Is people go, no, this is absurd. And it kind of, but what, there was Martin from... from I don't Hamilton. know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what motivates. Why, why do some kids randomly want to um, study bugs from the age of five on? I don't know. But certainly there was a part of me that always wanted to be in show business. There was a part of me that always wanted to be an actor. And there was a part of me that was drawn toward the absurdity. Even when I was a cast member of Second City, uh, in 1977, 78, 79, that era. Um, Catherine Herod once said that I was the first person to name his characters and to have a water dish so that I would keep changing my hairdo and looks from scene to scene. Because someone like Dan Aykroyd or, 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 or um, even John Candy would just come out and they'd just take an attitude, but they kind of looked the same. I was changing shirts. I was So I, e even in the early days, I was drawn toward changing the looks, masking my own appearance with the appearance of a character I was playing. Why do you want to mask your own appearance? I'm not doing psychology one-on-one here, yeah. but you know what I mean? Because I think that I was drawn toward character work and characters that I was playing didn't look like me. They looked like someone else. So, Were you hiding? Um, uh, Were you hiding? No, not remotely. I was never hiding because then I'd go on a talk show and be myself and be I, 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 happy to be myself. No, I was playing um, a character who was an insecure, nerdy guy, and I wasn't, so I had to change my look. Um, or I was playing an outrageous um, lounge singer with too much confidence and limited talent, so I had to change my look, you know? Do you remember the first absurd thing that you saw that little Martin saw and went, oh. I remember mine was Charlie Chapman in The Gold Rush, putting two buns on the end of two forks and Absolutely. doing a dance. And I was like I loved six. The Gold Rush, yeah. But it was Laurel and Hardy. Uh, uh, it was Abbott and Costello. It was, I mean, I, my, one of my favorite films as a kid was Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. And there's a scene where he's on top of a crate because it's been shipped from Transylvania, uh, Dracula. And uh, they're trying to get the crate down, and he's, they have ropes, and, hey, chick! And he's screaming, and he's falling, and there's a big crash. Well, that's what I was responding to. Lucy eating the chocolates and going through the conveyor belt, you know, that's what I responded to.